Key Luke never dreamed of being an actor. Born in Seattle in 1904, he wanted to be an artist. By 1928, when he arrived in Los Angeles, Luke was well enough known as a commercial artist to be tapped by Hollywood studios. He painted the ceiling mural at Grauman's Chinese Theater and designed elaborate programs for studio premieres like King Kong. So when the head of advertising at Metro Goldwyn Mayer invited him to come to a meeting, he brought his art portfolio. He was surprised that they wanted him to audition for a part in the Greta Garbo Weepy, The Painted Veil. This, please. Welcome, Welcome home, home, Doctor. Home, doc. How are you, Doctor? Uh, welcome and all that sort of thing, you know. Thank you. <laughs> How should I say? Oh, you say, uh, here, here. Here, here. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> the following year, he was cast as Charlie Chan's all-American number one son in Charlie Chan Goes to Paris. Come out, please. Who are you? Hello, Pop. What's the matter? Did I scare you? Gosh, it's good to see you. He went on to play Lee Chan in eight films opposite Warner Oland in Yellowface, including Charlie Chan at the Olympics, in which he shows us that Lee Chan is just another overachieving Asian American. was prepared for emergency. <laughs> From the 1930s to the 1950s, there was a plethora of films featuring Asian American detectives, all of them starring white men in yellowface. Charlie Chan was played by Warner Oland and then Sidney Toller. Mr. Moto was played by Peter Lorre. Also? Mr. Wong was played by Boris Karloff. I see. The only time an Asian American ever got the lead role in one of these detective films was in 1938, when Ki Luke somehow scored the role of Mr. Wong in Phantom of Chinatown. Ooh. It's a clunky B movie by Poverty Rose Studio Monogram. But what a pleasure to see Key Luke and Lotus Long as a pair of snappy Asian American sleuths out to solve a case. Feel like talking? Of course. What shall we talk about? Scrolls, ancient ones from Chinese temples. In 1940, Luke scored another recurring role as the first Kato in The Green Hornet. For this role, he tries on a Korean accent. It was a lucky day for me when I rescued you from that native in Singapore. He tried to kill me because I am a Korean. You shall never be sorry you saved my life. You've repaid me many times by your faithful service, Kato. Thank you, Mr. Britt. In between film roles, he continued to paint and draw. He made this beautiful mural for the 1941 film, The Shanghai Gesture. Luke began working in television in the 1950s and most famously played Master Po in Kung Fu. Close your eyes. What do you hear? I hear the water. I hear the birds. Do you hear your own heartbeat? No. Do you hear the grasshopper 
witches at your feet. Old man, how is it that you hear these things? Young man, how is it that you do not? He continued making movies until 1990. I gotta have him. He's incredible. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $100 for him. No. Look, I've gotta have him. It's a present for my son for Christmas. It's exactly what I've been looking for, and I've been everywhere. I'll give you $200. That's $200. I'm sorry. Mokwai, not for sale. Unlike many of his Asian American peers during Hollywood's golden era, Luke largely escaped playing evil Fu Manchu characters. This number one son went from G-Pops to the first Asian-American detective and the first Asian-American superhero sidekick. This is Viva L'Amour.